Hi, everybody. My name is Lenore von Stein, and this is another episode of The Facts. We've done a lot of these episodes. And today, uh, with, I'm talking about art and its establishments. That's the name of this. Uh, and I'm sitting here with Jessica Feldman. All these people sitting here with me are artists, and they also teach. So they got a foot in each one of those places, right? So he's got Jessica Feldman. She's an artist, a musician, a multimedia person. Uh, here's uh, Charlotte Meehan. She's a playwright. Uh, and a, uh, a teacher, a uh, professor, and uh, Christina Arnold, who is a, a visual artist at installations and, uh, and other painting and, and runs a gallery. And um, so uh, we've gathered here together. Uh, here's the first question when we, we toss this around a little bit before we, you know, we hit the ground here. Uh, can you, can you, What's the, you know, when you go to teach an art, when you go to teach an art, this the issue of teaching the craft or to, you know, what is art as opposed to, <laughs> well, let me just, I mean, what, what is art as opposed start to? Start with the yeah, easy question, right. right. What is art as opposed to a craft? I mean, a, you know, you've you got craftsmen sitting there making little silver filigree and stuff. What's an art? You know, is there, is there, I mean, you can wash dishes like an artist too, right? I, and I love that question and I hate that question. And my dad's favorite game is to wander around, you know, we're walking and he just points at random things and says, is that art? Dad, that's a dog. Is that <laughs> art? <laughs> that's a house, that's more complicated. <laughs> Is that art? It's a billboard. Okay, now we're into advertising, that's more complicated again. Uh, but I teach sometimes art appreciation, and I teach in Kentucky, and so our students are often first generation to, to college, and don't have a lot of art around them, whether, whatever you define that as, design, art, music, dance, theater, um, and I start, and end the class, so we have a whole semester discussing what is art. Mm -hmm. And they get so mad by about the second week because they're like, you're the teacher, you're supposed to tell uh. us what art is. I say, well, this is, you know, this is an, sort of an adventure, sort of a journey, and art doesn't necessarily mean the same thing for every culture. It hasn't meant the same thing across time. And honestly, it doesn't mean necessarily the same thing in every region, but there are things that aren't art. Mm -hmm. So, now go. What, what aren't art? Okay, I'll tag. <laughs> okay, just to give another, I also started taking pictures around campus. I teach installation art, and so my students um, would be making pieces on campus, and campus would get riled up because they're like, oh, the trees are wrapped in bubble wrap again. What's going on? Or there's bones in the middle of the yard, or there's forks on the lawn. And so these are all art pieces. And then I started taking pictures of not art. So like a construction site, there was a guy um, raising money for Habitat for Humanity in a toilet, so there was a toilet sitting there. That's not art, click. And so then I did a, a slideshow on not art. And the students, it was so funny because I would show them the installations, they're like, okay, that's art. And then I'd show them the picture of the toilet on the lawn and, and I'd say, this is not art. And they'd like, oh man, I thought that was art. <laughs> so, being intention matters. If you do not intend it to be art, it's not art. If you do intend for it to be art, then we can start talking. Uh huh. Hmm. What do you do with that definition, Charlotte? Or uh, Jessica? Well, I suppose we look at these things through the lens of our own art or craft, you know, since the two for me come together. And um, I will often say to my students in beginning playwriting, that what you've just written is an awesome Saturday Night Live skit. Let's talk about what would bring this into the realm of art. Mm -hmm. And it, for one thing, it sort of depends on the subject that they chose for the skit, what I am calling a skit, for me to even address how you could move that toward art. But for me, I'd have to say I agree with Athol Fugard that a meaningful piece of literature has a political uh, part to it. I, it's hard for me to figure out what word to say there, but because I'm not saying that all art should be political at all, but should involve, at least in the realm of plays, social critique of some kind. It mm -hmm. does usually have that. Um, and then I also want it to be, to transport me somewhere else. I don't want to feel I'm in my everyday life. But again, that's my personal bias, which is why it's really hard to answer the question. I like your answer. I was thinking about it a lot, and I think the thing that has stayed with me over the years is this idea that it has to ask a question or make you uncomfortable in some way. And I think 
that is where the redeeming social value comes. Mm. Like the, that it posits a theory or brings forth a problem mm. that maybe it doesn't even resolve. And in that way, I think a lot of, I don't know, I can go to the Met and look at a statue of a naked woman and I'm like, is it art? I know what's in the Met, but and I know it's well rendered, but actually, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. You know, and I I really like believe that if that that's that's what art needs to do, mm -hmm. um, and it doesn't really do it well or thoughtfully if it's not crafted with some kind of intention. I think, mm -hmm. um, but for me, I think. That's where I locate the value in the question. You just made me think of a great line from Klaus Oldenburg's uh, installation, Store Days. Um, he wrote a manifesto to go with it, and the, one of the lines is, I'm for an art that does something other than sit on its ass in a museum. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, well, just to sort of tag sure. in, too, I think that oftentimes we dismiss art that also has function. Mm -hmm. right. And thinking about colleagues and, and students and, and artists who make things that are functional, I, I do believe that it can be both functional mm -hmm. and art. Um, and thinking about just if, if art is to transport you somewhere and you're holding a beautiful vessel that you drink out of, um, I think that there's something very important to that as well. It's not political, it's, and I feel like in my own work I'm socially conscious and political, but I, not all art has to be that way. Well, there's, there's also the whole like, question of values in design. I think a vessel can be political. You know, an overpass, you know, there's this great, I think it's a Langdon Winter article that discusses the overpasses that were built over the uh, highway leading out to the beaches on Long Island and how they were built just low enough so that no buses could go through, so no poor people could come out there, and how that is a totally political object, right? So I think, like, there are, like, values and politics and imagination involved in making a functional object as well. And in purchasing something that's been handcrafted, as opposed to going mm -hmm. to, you know, big box store and and buying things. I mean, I think that supporting the individual who makes things is a political act in itself, whether or not you think of it that way. Mm -hmm. I've, it, you, you're making me think about because you know, now I'm thinking about what, how would I define mm -hmm. art as, and, and I think what I've come back to is it, it's this going back to this idea of you know you can wash dishes artfully or mm -hmm. something in this expression, in this in, mm -hmm. in this expressiveness, what this is what this is like for you or what this is, it's more than that, what this is, something that is, is so uh, um, personal and, and real that it, it reaches across you to me mm -hmm. uh, and it comes out in that thing that you're making or that you're doing uh, as opposed to something that is beautifully crafted sitting in the Met but uh, it's nothing for me or the movie that's, you know, the performance that's, you know, well made and everybody seems to be doing it well but it, it doesn't mean anything, okay. you know, it doesn't do anything for me. I don't, uh, so I think, so how, so, so given these different ideas, how do you teach art? Do you teach art? Do you teach people to be artists? That is a really tough question. I mean, there's the how do you teach and then there's the do you teach, and my answer is, well, I hope so. I mean, that's, I'm employed to do that and I spend a lot of my day trying to do that, trying to teach people to be artists. And um, I think that it has to do with how do, you ta how do you help somebody else tap an inner creativity, an inner spirit, an inner voice? And that's very different than teaching them a skill set. And I think at the undergraduate level, we certainly do both, um, or we, att we attempt to do both. And I think that having a good skill set enables you mm -hmm. to be able to express what you're intending to express. Um, but allowing for a creative space or teaching, uh, teaching someone to be creative, I think it's more allowing them to tap their own inner creativity is much harder. It is hard, and one of the things I do is I, I refuse to teach a form from the outside. And so I'll ask each of my students in beginning playwriting the question, why write a play? 
and that's their first assignment. Mm -hmm. They have to come in having written, why write a play? And I think you have to have a reason. And so if they never thought about having a reason, they now have to think about a reason. And they come up with extraordinary answers to ward off death, you know, <laughs> bring community together. Extraordinary answers that I couldn't do better myself after 25 years of writing plays. And so I respect that they have ideas that they want to bring forth. And then I say write a monologue without teaching them how to write a monologue. And they come in with their monologues. And I respond to the way they chose, consciously or unconsciously, to fulfill that assignment and realize, oh, that's the kind of writer you probably are, even though you're at the very beginning. And I give them a really wide range of plays to read so that they know that, oh, the sky's the limit. There's a lot of ways I can attack this form, rather than the form first, which I believe, at least in plays, creates imitative writing. Mm. Composition is always, I mean, the, the kind of composition classes I, I took was always the form first, you know. So you studied the form, and then you wrote in that manner, you know, and that's, and you know, and... That's common, uh, yeah. you know. Yeah, you know, and I've thought about it a lot because I had, I had this very, like, classical musical training and then somehow ended up doing, like, weird installation art. <laughs> and so all those years I spent practicing counterpoint, mm. what was that for? And I, I can't totally, like, intellectually justify it, but I feel glad that I have it. Like, I, I don't know what, what your feelings are about, like, learning techniques. Well, and it's so interesting, too, and I was saying to you earlier, I came in the back door to art. I mean, I've come in the back door to lots of places. It's sort of a specialty. Um, and that's one thing I teach students, too, is there's usually a back door, mm -hmm. and if you get denied the front door, look for the back door. And sometimes there's a multiple back doors, mm -hmm. and there's a way to kind of sneak around the edges and, and come in. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's often what art is. It's By the front door, you mean, because you started in medical, and you started in, in... Public health. In public health, and then and then went into art. Right, and I actually, I, I chose my undergraduate school thinking, it, I went to Brown, the neighbor's school was RISD, there were sisters, I thought, you know, I can do both, and ended up deciding that it was it was too difficult it wasn't my where my heart was at the moment and d did not get a I don't have an undergraduate degree in art I'm saying this on television this is terrible um, but, I don't either yeah and I think that that has enriched my background in some senses but it, I'm also lacking in some of the basic experiences um, and so so I don't necessarily have experience in learning the skill set the same way that I am now teaching. But, and, and I... Me either. Yeah. I switched. Yeah. You know, I ended up teaching sculpture and new media art and physical computing and sort of having to teach it to myself and then go to class and teach it to these kids. Kids. Master's students who are <laughs> not kids at all. Um, I think they're lucky for that. I really do. Because you're coming at it from a generative place with them. Yeah. You know, I mean... Again, I can't believe I'm saying this in public, but I really believe that my undergraduate degree was in French and comparative literature, and reading a lot was just what I needed to do yeah. at that time. My students in playwriting are fantastic, and I could never have done that at their age. So I think this backdoor idea of yours, for me meaning, you know, maybe at a later time in your life you'll get exactly. to that, and is absolutely right. We don't all have to be lockstep. You know. And I and I went back, and maybe part of the back door too is you retrace your steps sometimes, which I don't think you ever go directly over the same path because mm -hmm. you've learned in the process. But I didn't do these technique, the sort of the technical learning when I was 18. Mm -hmm. I kind of came yeah. at it again when I was a bit older, and maybe I wanted it better, <laughs> better, worse, <laughs> more badly, more badder. Yeah. <laughs> more badder. <laughs> everyone on this panel, I didn't. I, I mean, I knew that, but I, you know, I didn't really put it together. So everyone sitting at this table started in uh, either in a different art form mm -hmm. or not in art and came to it came to wherever they are right now uh, later on so that says something about as, as a uh, because one of the things I've been involved in a, I started as an actor and, and and spent some time in dance and then went into music and 
And, and, and one of the things I watched, is, especially in the two that I spent the most, certainly music, I've had the longest training in, but acting had quite a bit of training. It was early in life, so it made a big impression on me, um, was that I saw a kind of, th I mean, I, th I think for some people the, in, in the course of, of acquiring the craft, whether it had to do with acquiring the craft or some other reason, the light can go out of their mm -hmm. eyes, you know, mm -hmm. the, the, mm -hmm. uh, the, mm -hmm. The why am I? What is it that I want? You know, and as if 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 what you were pursuing was some glamorous dream, uh, rather and certainly there are a lot. You know, that's part of the story, mm -hmm. and that bubbles bubbles burst. You know, and right. uh, and then you found out it was this slogging. You know, maybe to tell the truth, or you know, like, well, that's a whole lot. And well, that wasn't in my plan. <laughs> and uh, and uh, so, w what do you? You know, it, it's it's. I mean, I think that's one of the issues, because in, in, there's certainly a lot of people that are turned out of art school, most of whom don't go into the arts. Mm. Yeah, mm. yeah. What is it, 90% or something? I don't know, but they don't seem to go into the arts too much. And that's a statistic that I hear, you know, that that's 95% of people who come out with an undergraduate degree do not pursue, so. I think we know some of that problem. You know, without the trust fund, economics. You know, yeah. it's difficult. Life to Jews. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we don't live in a country that widely supports artists. Yeah, I, I'm very impressed with, with my students, with our students, um, who, again, many of them are first generation college, and they come in in Kentucky and say, I want to be an artist. Mm. And their family says, what? <laughs> Don't you want to make money? Don't you want to, don't you want to make a living? You're going to college for a reason. Mm -hmm. And I mean, my argument is they gain all kinds of skills that are useful in the workplace, the same you would if you're doing English or history or mm -hmm. um, social science often. Um, you learn how to write, you learn how to present your ideas, you learn how to support an argument, you learn how to work in groups. Um, but yeah, getting a job in art, I don't necessarily, as teachers, we are not that's kind of the thing that mm -hmm. we're earning income from. It's not our art. Yeah. So we're not working artists, we're working teachers who are also artists. So I don't know what to tell students when they say, I want a job in art, what do I do? Um, yeah, it's funny that you put it that way because I always say to my students, I am not your teacher. I am <laughs> not a teacher. I am an artist. And I am here sharing ways that you can approach this with you. I'm sharing that with you. And I understand fully what you're saying, because of course I am a teacher. Right. But to keep my head in my work, I have to look at myself that way. Right. That I am a working artist sharing my practice and handing down something precious to me, to the next generation. But I feel the college is paying me to be a playwright. Right. But I understand the rub, trust me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, I was, I've been thinking about it a lot, especially after the question Lenore posed um, earlier about sort of the psychic ramifications of living in a culture where what we are isn't a thing, uh -huh. right? Like, I'm an artist, that's not a job that you, that's not a job, that is not an institutional job. It doesn't exist. So, and the fact that art, what is art is also in flux uh -huh. and in question. Yeah. Yeah, which I love. Right. right. I mean, there's some freedom that comes with it too. But for me, it's I. I guess I love teaching, and I think that can also be a very creative practice. But it's been really difficult to sort of go into the world. Not. It's been really difficult and really wonderful to go into the world without a path that you're supposed to follow. And I think that's. That's a hard thing to talk to students about because you're like, I don't know what you should do. I don't right. even know what I should do. <laughs> right. I'm just kind of making a living and eating every day. Yeah, and, and that's then the brave I make thing. some stuff. Yeah. Yes, it is. That it, there isn't, an, and I say this to my students as well. If you were in an accounting program, like this isn't a field in which you go through it, you get a piece of paper, and you go to do a mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. It's not like nursing school. There's all kinds of nursing you can do, but you're a nurse at the end, and you become a nurse in practice. Your accounting program, you become an accountant in practice. Mm -hmm. This is something where you make up the pathway as you go. 
and I was, do you guys know the story Harold and the Purple Crayon, mm -hmm. the children's book? I love that Yes. Book. <laughs> what is it? Can you it's, it's a young boy, I think he's four, and he goes to sleep and dreams and he has a purple crayon and he has to sort of draw his way through his environment. And I've been thinking about that as far as myself. It, and so everywhere his crayon takes him to the woods to see a monster in the sea, in the ocean, and then he's trying to get home. So he has to draw his pathway home and he has to remember what it looks like from inside his window. Right. And so it's kind of this, we all have our purple crayon yeah. and we're all kind of drawing our own way through our lives. And you know, maybe your crayon's orange, I don't know. So you're going a slightly different path, but it's, it's, it's brave to pick up that crayon and go because we don't know where it's gonna end up. And, but we're also our own actors, our own leaders, and that is exciting and powerful. I think it also begs the question of the product in a way yeah. that I find, I'm not advocating not supporting artists, but I, I think the way we position ourselves in sort of the, you know, hyper, advanced capitalist world that America is, is really problematic mm -hmm. to the institution, right? Because here we are doing stuff and really sometimes we make something. So, some of us make things. They might be things you can sell, mm -hmm. but probably a lot of us not. Mm -hmm. I don't. So what are we doing? Like our existence is not like feeding into that system in the right way. And I think it changes the way you think about time, right? Like I think it changes the way you think about your hours mm -hmm. because you're not trying to do something productive in in that sort of like capitalist sense mm -hmm. of productivity. But I, I, you know, I think that this Somewhere in here, I have, you know, goes to this question of what is the purpose of art? What is the purpose of art in, in any society, capitalist or anything else? You know, what is the, and if it doesn't, if it doesn't fit into the, you know, it's, it's, you know, I, I make a, I make a blockbuster movie, and mm -hmm. that fits into the capitalist system. Mm -hmm. uh, but I do something, you know, that has a, let's say, a, a, a more profound effect, mm -hmm. and it, it doesn't fit in, and. Uh, so, so we're, we're, we're in the last five minutes of this of this episode. What is the purpose of art? Well, I was circling back to your question about what you know if it doesn't fit in. Often, what is seen by an, only a few compared to the blockbuster movie has a huge effect. That we can't measure. Certainly, that's what history is, is you know, has taught you know, us. These little, these mm -hmm. little, you know, Beethoven's not playing to these big audiences, right. is he? You know, that's right. And I think the purpose of art is various, and it's personal. And I think you're maybe asking about the purpose of expression, which can be life-saving for the artist and for mm -hmm. the viewer, audience, reader. It has saved lives. So that's a pretty big purpose. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I think the purpose of, what is the purpose of art for society, for a community, for an individual? And I mean, I think that, you know, we're talking about economic development. It's, art is sort of the, the creative capital is a new tag word for economic development. We're gonna get the creatives in here and our, mm -hmm. our market's gonna boom. Um, so that's kind of, Maybe but that's, that's within this capitalist right idea, exactly right um, and then for society I mean there's all kinds of purposes in terms of beautification or expression or function but as an individual I mean I think I just I keep going back to what is my purpose as an artist maybe um, or I have to make I have to make stuff or I get twitchy and weird <laughs> yes. I mean that sort of comes down to that I understand exactly. that one. yeah and so maybe yes. and then so what's the difference between art and a sport you know I, I don't know some people are athletes because that's the way that they kind of feel that they drive their psychic energy um, so sometimes like at its in my studio at its most private I can't care what the purpose of art is uh -huh. at a societal level because I'm making. And if I, and you mentioned this, it's kind of in the capitalist system. If I'm worried about this object interacting 
with the capitalist system, it dies. I mean, yeah. that's a big, like, tiny little guy, like, breathe, have some more glitter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, the purpose of art for me is that I have to do it. Yeah. Like, it's a, it's a respite or it's a withdrawal in a way that... That gives I mean, you life, but there's always been, you know, like those, you know, those cave drawings and stuff. I mean, yeah. there's always been right. people have always done this stuff. They've always ha they have to communicate with one another. They have to communicate, and, and they like to communicate in ways that are communicate a lot. You know, yeah. <laughs> that, that that just yeah. don't leave you kind of, you know. I mean, I, I'm watching a Hollywood movie, and, and you know, maybe it's very glossy, but it, it doesn't make me feel better about myself. Yeah. It doesn't make me feel. Uh, um, more thoughtful necessarily it doesn't right. it doesn't help me it doesn't help me live it might make me feel in fact more anxious that I don't look like that mm -hmm. or you know I have you know it, it's it's not it's not uh, it's not my friend mm. yeah, uh, yeah and uh, I think that when uh, you know we'll talk about this as we as we move along when the when um, when you have a when I when I have a, 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 a an artistic experience that I like and I may not always like it when I mean as an audience I may not always like it when I'm going through it but it 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 changes me it, it works me it it it, it yeah. creates a, a, a better a new a fuller a bigger uh, me so look we're gonna continue this conversation and um, I got Christina Arnold over here. I got Charlotte Meehan, uh, Jessica Feldman. I got, I got, I got, you know. What I mean? And um, <laughs> I'm just a child of TV and, um, and of, uh, I don't know, commercials. And uh, so w w when we come back, which will be next week for you guys, and then we'll go on the web, and you can see us on the web, uh, 1687.org, or we're at different places, YouTube and stuff, if you want to catch our act. And um, so uh, we'll be back soon, and I'm, I'm just trying to, we've got 20 seconds here. I never know how to play this. I think that the purpose of art is to ask the questions that are too big and too scary to ask any other way. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> adios for now. Bye. <laughs>